Hello, hello, and welcome to another Sunday evening of painting miniatures. Um, I have cheated a little bit and already started um, because I'm doing some contrast paint on Perdita here and I want to get it done as soon as possible so it can actually uh, dry up properly before you know, moving on to more fun stuff. I mean, the contrast paints, you've seen them before if you've been to this channel um, or if you've been painting with them, of course, you know them. It really is simply just slap on a fairly heavy coat of paint and then you get some really nice both shadows and highlights going at the same time especially if like me you like doing this genital highlight um, it's a method for priming your miniatures but in a way as i said welcome to another sunday evening of miniature painting I had hoped to actually finish these ones before today, but then, you know, the real world kind of happened. Um, and work was actually interesting, uh, a lot more interesting than it, it often is. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love my job and I love the, the tasks I can I, I have normally in, in this line of work. Um, but sometimes, you know, even the best job can also be boring, crappy and just Anyway, now I'm not sure what to make of the way the uh, contrast paint so far is flowing on the hat, but it will have to do for now. Just need to do the underside. Um, hey, corpse! I am having a very wonderful day, thank you. What about you? Are things good up in Norway? I'm guessing you have a lot of snow up there. Oh, sounds great. Hey, Cam, good to see you. You have minus 25 corpse. That is impressive and amazing. And also a really good reason to have a beard. Um, so, well, as I said, um, just did the, the contrast on Pedita here to get the coat and hat done because I really want to focus, um, I forgot one arm, sorry. <laughs> I really want to focus actually on getting her hair right, uh, today. We talked about this Wednesday about what color to do it. And I came up with an idea that I want to try out. Um, I want to dry brush her hair to begin with, with a little bit of, um, of, of purple, just a discreet slash, uh, slap of, of um, purple on her hair. And once that is done, I will give it some, try to give it some of the black contrast paint to see if I can actually make the purple shine through the black. Um, and then give that kind of sort of a tint to her black hair. Uh, maybe touch it up with a little bit more highlighting afterwards. So if the effect that I'm going for is actually giving her fully black hair, but also done in a way so the highlights will have, you know, as I said, the purple tint, which I think is going to look awesome. So anyway. That's her coat done. Now, when working with the contrast paint, I really, really prefer to let it set and, and dry up completely. It takes longer than the normal acrylic paints. Uh, the reason I want to do that is to avoid getting small scratches or fingerprints or marks of any other kind. And again, I have some plastic that resonates when I'm talking. And I'm guessing it's the lid of the lamp here. Um, just wiggled it a bit seems to be working better now so while uh, Padilla's coat is drying off uh, I will put in some more work on uh, old grandma here uh, she has the very awesome wheelchair 
that I need to figure out what to do with. Uh. Hey Modifian, so you showed up at last. I hope your day is going better. Uh, it sounded like you had a rough start to it. So what I want to do with this coat is, or this, uh, the wheelchair here, is I want to touch up a few mistakes I made last time. Watching these dummies means I need to get my wet palette out. And in addition to that, I also work on Abuela's dress. I think she's wearing a long dress. And again, with, with this crew, I'm very much going for sort of khaki brown colors, but then having a lot of red, like I have with uh, Santiago here, put on some red uh, to, to give them some color to make it stand out. And I think it's going quite well for the miniatures I've painted so far. But just going to do a real quick touch up on the some of the wooden panels that got a little bit um, a little bit of brass on them last time when I was dry brushing so that's quickly taken care of I think for the brass panels here what I'll actually be doing later on is to um, just maybe do edge highlighting on them so I don't actually shade them down because I think they're dark enough as they are. So we'll see how that goes. But again, most importantly, get some paint on the miniatures uh, because I just, I love paint, uh, playing with painted miniatures. It's so much more fun. So anyway, what have people been up to this fantastic weekend? So you've been up to nothing. Well, that is um, that's both good and bad. It's good in the sense that if you haven't done anything, you haven't done anything bad. But well, I've never played Animal Crossing. I've heard about it from so many people uh, that it kind of makes me go, hmm, I should look into this. But I just haven't, to be honest, I haven't been bothered looking at it. So my impression of Animal Crossing is that it's a cute little game where you somehow control a lot of animals doing things. That's the extent of my knowledge. I really hit a crappy camera angle tonight. Sorry about that. I keep getting my hands in the way of the camera. I should probably fix that. But I don't want to make you guys seasick while in the camera around and I don't particularly want to go on uh, yeah, any kind of be right back shutting down the stream kind of thing so I can mess around offline I'll just we'll just live with it for now so there I don't know if you can see it but at least you got so much more probably because i tried moving the camera away but now i mean just giving a, a simple bit of uh shading well that's impossible to see hang on we are gonna make you seasick and put the camera down there is not good because then i can't actually reach my water jugs but i can move those around i'm gonna not 
I'm gonna hit the camera several times in this stream, I'm pretty sure. Uh, apologize in advance. So... So this is this is what we'll do, but anyway, um, I just shaded the the inside of the uh, the chair here, but as you can see, that gives a lot of dark lines. Um, it has kind of sort of raised small puffs in the in the fabric, and actually, what I should be doing is I should not be holding it the normal side up because as long as the the shades are, are wet, they're actually gonna slowly seep. Uh, due to gravity so holding it upside down and then a little bit more flat may actually help getting the higher parts shaded as well so in the meantime Modifin explains what Animal Crossing is all about so you're like a mayor and the animals are your useless villagers the uh, villagers right build up the island and design it like you want collect furniture fill up the museum uh, fill up the museum by collecting bugs fish art fossils etc okay cool so it's kind of a city simulation game, sounds like it. Then it might actually be something for me. Um, I've always loved those games ever since I could uh, play. The, I think it was the first Sim City, not even Sim City Two, or at least definitely not Two Thousand. The very first Sim City game back in the late eighties, early nineties. It was really fun, yeah, especially when you realize uh, when you found out that you can make natural disasters. Um, you know, get a city up and running, and everything works, and you know, crime is down. You have low taxes, all those things. Um, and then it actually, for me, it became boring at that point. So, let's move on to where are things. Um, First one was from 89. Thank you, Rohan, and welcome. I mean, a lot of things have happened to, to games since 89. Um, what did that? I, I actually played City Skylines uh, quite a bit a few years ago, but never really looked that much into to those things. I just tried figuring out how things worked in the game. Um, but yeah, so you shouldn't eradicate crime completely. Is that what you're saying? Uh, or is that what the game was saying? Yeah, that was, what do you think? That was kind of my, one of the conclusions I, I came to with the, um, City Skylines was that you really, really had to spend a lot of time on your roads and making them uh, work correctly. A lot more time on that than doing your know, proper zoning and I mean, doing electricity and uh, water and sewage and all that. That was fairly trivial um, when I played because it was really just a matter of you know supply and demand. Get it, get enough power lines and uh, power plants so on up and running and then you're, you're good to go whereas traffic was a little bit more erratic which mean it meant to me that I had to spend a lot of time just going okay so I have to reroute over here I have to make a new um, road here and so on and so on so yeah I, I very much get that Go. Okay, cool. So now, what else do we need to do? Yeah, the well, and the original Sim City, as I said, you know, natural disasters, which actually included Godzilla. I think think it was in that menu you you, you found it. Um. That was that was fun. So just doing a little bit of touch up here.
Um, just doing the wheels. So yeah, now as I said, a lot of things have happened in games uh, since back then in the in the eighties. Just earlier today, me and Rohan and some some other guy played a bit of uh, Vermintide Two, which is again the old Warhammer world, and I have. Definitely mentioned this before, but I I really love that world, both from you know, reading books and set in it and playing role playing games and games in general. Uh, that is one of my go to worlds. I really really love the the atmosphere and the complete and utter uh, mess they've made of the entire world. Hey Siri, welcome aboard. So Siri, um, if I actually get both Perdita and um, Abuela done before Friday, I may, might be playing with them again. Uh, I don't know. It would be fun to actually play with a fully fully painted crew. Um, I should probably warn people that Siri is actually my, I think so far, my only opponent I've played against in Malifaux. So not a lot of people play it here in Denmark. Hopefully that can be changed. But we'll see how it goes. And it's it's I think it's difficult for miniature games starting up. And if you I think I saw um what's his name? The guy who has uh, tabletop minions, Uncle Adam. It's his call sign you talked about what you can do to actually promote games in your area and all that yeah but I know that one of your fully painted crews are the Kung Fu monks um, I don't know if you want to want to play them I'm not sure I want to play against them but how, how many players are there actually in, in Copenhagen and, and where do they meet well a year ago where did they meet before the lockdown and, and everything. Ah, so Rogue Trader. Yeah, I, a Rogue Trader, um, as far as I understand it, is a board game club place in Copenhagen. I've looked into it a few times, um, but I always could put off by their membership fee, which is, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I always remember, always come to the conclusion that it's way too much compared to how little I would use it. Um, and that kind of sort of means that it, it's not an option for me. Um, I know that um, one of the guys who is very active in the Relic Blade community also uh, promotes Rogue Trader uh, and plays there. So I, I have a feeling that it really, really is a, a super awesome, cool place. Um, probably just not for me. Also, just to um, let our foreign friends know, um, Rogue Trader is located in Copenhagen itself um, and last time I checked it would probably take me about 45 minutes to get there which means that there's a quite a bit of transportation time involved in, in going there so it's not a place where I can just you know pop down down to um, it it will give me at least one and a half hours of transportation which is I, I don't mind doing that. I mean, I do that when I go to the Bastard Cafe, which is the board game cafe where me and Bohan and Siri know each other from. Uh, but it does become a bit of a logistic challenge, uh, especially if you're logging around a lot of miniatures, which you wouldn't for a game like Malifaux, because it's a skirmish game. But yeah. Oh, well, of course, there's a Facebook group for Malifaux. 
Why didn't I think of that before? Probably because I still feel like I'm such a noob at this game that I don't really feel sort of comfortable, especially not comfortable engaging in tournaments. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm also a little hesitant to get too involved in too many things at the same time, so I don't know. But hey, maybe we could, uh, when, once things are open again, we could get some Bastard Cafe stuff going. Do some tournaments in there. Cool. I've actually um, thought about many times that it would be cool if we in Bastard Cafe maybe got some Warhammer Underworlds up and running. I think Warhammer Underworlds is enough of a board game that we can, can actually push the idea. I mean, if you have Cloud Spire and Sky Tear and games like that in there, which we do. I'm not sure about Cloud Spire, but we do have... Um, Sky tier. and they're about as sort of miniature-ish as uh, Underworlds, because Underworlds does have the expansions and blah blah blah, but so do a lot of the other games, and it is board, you're playing on a board, you have a fixed crew, uh, all those things in, in Underworld, so I think it would make sense for us. Um, So yeah, but yeah, Wohan, we definitely, definitely have to get you playing soon, and I look so forward to that. Um, I knocked over one of my paints and couldn't find it. Now, in another life. I want to, to join the team that comes up with names for paint. And this one here, Parasite Brown. Why? I mean, where do these names come from? Um, all right, that's a good point um, with Underworld. The place before you tore all decks apart. That is true. That is going to be tricky and difficult and cards are going to be uh, missing from the games and that might actually make them annoying to play for people who, who knows what goes on. But then again, people who knows what is going on in these games, wouldn't they usually have their own or bring their own? I don't know. But it's a good point. Um, I don't know where it ended up with Magic uh, at the Bastard. I know someone built some, some decks, sort of predefined uh, predefined decks. Uh, but, but I don't know what the state of them are because I don't really have an interest in magic anymore, so I didn't follow up on it. But yeah, but that is the... I mean, for the people who are not familiar with how board game cafes run, sort of, for real skis, is that you buy a bunch of games and you would expect people to actually, you know, take care of them, but the state they're in it just really, really quickly um, deteriorate. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right term for it. But they just go. They're worn down pretty quickly. Uh, and one thing is that the components get worn down simply by people playing them. I mean, take some of the uh, free to play ticket to ride games in there. It's actually, in, in many ways, it's interesting uh, and hilarious to see that regular cards can be so. Uh, worn down from normal play that you cannot even see the colors on them anymore. I think that's pretty impressive and says a lot about you know the popularity of those games. Um, so it's cool. I mean, it's, it's good. It means they see a lot of action. But it's also, it keeps amazing me uh, that that they you know, are played that much that is so, yeah, so damaged. But then on the other, the other problem we, one of the other problems we face is that people just 
don't really take care of them. Um, and even it's not that people sort of consciously mess up the games. It's not 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 like that at all. But it's just they'll drop a piece on the floor, and then for some reason they cannot find it or choose not to look for it, um, and then it's just gone. And then you have a game without uh, important pieces, and we do have replacement for some of the stuff. Uh, but I mean, we have some some events or whatever, some some uh, some days in there where we try to take some of the games and fix them up, figure out what's missing, and put it in. But it's just it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to do that, and then also have all the spare parts laying around. But yeah. It is um, it's interesting. The the actual sort of real world uh, things that happen. I mean, you if you look at your own board games, you will see that some of them are probably worn, and you can see, oh, I played this a lot, or it's got a few, you know, bruises on the box or whatever. But subject a game box and its contents to normal people. For a lengthy period of time and you'd be amazed at the ways they can break so yeah but anyway that's uh that's that's another rant or probably another day i would still far rather have the games be worn than not be played which is the current situation because the cafe is closed so Goes wheels. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Oh yeah, someone actually uh, last time said that I should put something on the kettle here to make it stand out a bit. And I really thought about this for the last couple of days. And the only two things I can come up with to break the brass is either to do some some of the you know the grill up here and the meters and maybe the band here doing those in some silver or sort of um, steel color or i could do sort of sit, claim that this was a leather strip and then make it dark brown but if i make it dark brown it's not really going to stand out from you know, from the rest of the coloring so i think we're just going to go with a little bit of Let's do a gun metal. That's a fairly dark steel color. Um, I mean, if you, in my opinion and experience, if you take a too bright um, color, like going for full on silver. Um, oh yeah, Wohan, the the cafe is a myth. Um, it it doesn't exist. It's just in my imagination and other people's imagination as well. At least that's what we claim. And then we just keep it hidden from people where it is. So we can have it all to ourselves. Um, I'm just revisiting my strategy of actually using this dry brush to try and hit these bands and all that. That is not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we all know that, I mean, Narnia and Middle Earth are, of course, made up countries, and New Zealand would be on this fictional southern hemisphere. Sphere. And we all know that you cannot have a southern hemisphere since the Earth is flat. Right, people? Isn't, isn't that? I mean, by now, I mean, so many people have claimed that the Earth is flat, that it's got to be true. I mean, isn't that how, how these things work? Say it enough times and then it happens. Concave. Hmm, it might be. Maybe we're living on a Taurus donut. I think that would be pretty neat.
So there, I mean, this actually does a lot to, to just break the monotony of the color, just having this single band in a different color. Let me do these in here. Pipes. Yeah, I, I like it as well. I mean, it doesn't, it, it isn't much, but it is enough to just break the, the brass color and just give a little bit of extra um, when looking down. I need to get more on the upside so it's actually visible when, when, when the miniature is on the table. Because again, that's the, the, the main thing I, I consider here Again, it's getting these you know, ready for playing. Uh, I'd like to call the tabletop ready. You've all heard this before. If you are not new to this channel. Um, but to that effect, I always cheat as much as possible. Um, use every single trick in the book to make things look better. Um, I was just about to say in the environment where it's being used. But I guess that is actually the right way to say it. So you know, for the for the purpose of play, playing games, um, there's no need to go. Well, if, as always, if you want to do it, do it. Um, I'm not here to tell you what you, you can and cannot do. I'm just here to explain how my line of thinking and reasoning is for these things. So um, to me, this is about making the some black suit on it yeah i could do that um maybe i should get some of the um weathering effects you can get you can get sort of like a pencil um with different with with the pigments in it and you can just sort of rub it on different pieces of the the miniature and it will will rub off and give that sort of a nitty-gritty dirty sooty thing or rust colors or whatever here. I mean, this is... I probably shouldn't be using one of my good brushes um, for this, but I do need, need a little bit of control because you know, the, the detail level is here, so I don't get it in all the wrong places. So yeah, I am... I am using what's probably my best brush for a metallic Oh, electric blue coil on top. Uh, I think I could actually do that, but it's I don't think it's a coil as such because it's not electricity we're dealing with here. It's uh, just steam powered. So I'm guessing it's more like a um, safety valve or whatever. do this round bit whatever they told you I would hit the uh, the camera tonight now someone really needs to invent a camera and a microphone and a magnifying glass that takes up no space whatsoever but works just as fine as you know the the, the ones we have today Because I am trying to balance all of this. That went out of frame. 
and it is a little difficult. Um, so yeah, I actually kind of sort of have to slide my my hand down and under the camera to be able to get to my to my water pot. Um, you can see the camera right here. Um, this here is pretty much where I'm sitting. So if I pull my hand up to a fire behind, uh, you can see here, this actually is going straight into, to be able to see um, the model as I'm painting. Um, I've considered you know, putting it on top and looking down, but I'm not entirely sure I would be able to see around the magnifying glass. And also then it would be pretty much here which was even more in the middle of my face than it already is. And yeah, I get I get that you thought it was a coil. It it has some coily coily qualities to it. Um, but I, I, again, on, on a steam powered um, wheelchair, I just don't see the the electric electricity uh, happening. And of course, there could be a, a generator of a sort, I guess. Um, so it was actually sort of a, a electric wheelchair and the electricity came from a, a steam powered generator. But I think that's pushing it a little bit. But whatever it is, I mean, I get the coil thing because it has these things around it um, but I'm guessing more of a chimney than anything else oh shoot I should do all the rivets in silver that will not be today because that's gonna be boring as something unmentionable let's just keep touching up stuff and hopefully get get ready hey aj welcome we are of course painting miniatures and randing so how are things in canada We need to move on a little bit. Sometimes when I'm painting, I get to this point where I just kind of do the same thing over and over again, or just um, overcorrect everything or whatever, and I actually don't get a lot of work done on the miniature instead of just going, yeah, okay, this is done, move on to the next part. Um, so I will try to do that and then fix up the wheels just a little bit. And I'll give the wheel some shading and do the hubs. Yeah, well, and I, I get I get that. Um, I do that quite a bit myself. Um, just you know, stop and thinking and overthinking and just doing things and redoing it, but. I really need to just teach myself that the important thing is to get the miniature painted. And then I can always, you know, restore or sort of store the, the ideas and use them in later projects instead of having, you know, if I get an idea, I have to do it now kind of thing. There's, there's no point in, in getting stuck with that. Um, so. Oh, that's just going to have to do. So I want to move on to bigger and better things. I 
Now, not to mention which one of which is the rest of our boiler uh, that I actually haven't started on at all, uh, but really need to get started on. Should probably also have filled in, you know, the bits up here, but I didn't. That's from the the assembly. So I was saying, I need to shade it a little bit. We'll do that over here first. We need, we need, we need something darker than this. We're going down to dark tone. The dark tone kind of has a little bit of blue-ish, so blue or gray to it, um, rather than the, the strong tone, which is more red. And I like to, to switch them up a little bit on different parts of the model, uh, even though I'm using you know the same uh, base color, the, the parasite brown here, for instance. That's the same as I used in the inside, but using a different shade and here applying it quite generously um, will give it a far darker finish and hopefully make it look like something other than you know, the other places where I use the, the same color or the base color. Not that there is that many details to actually do anything with on the on the wheels here, but it does sort of tone them down a little bit and add a little bit of variation to the to the color. So let us call them done here and move on to to what? Maybe let that dry off for a bit and then move on with Perdita. Yes, because we need to go have fun with Perdita's hair. Eugene, hello. Welcome. That's 50. It is awesome. I have 50 followers. Thank you very much, Eugene. I appreciate that. Um, now, unfortunately, since it then had, uh, <laughs> I had my, my Christmas vacation. It still needs that there's about two weeks until I actually have enough stream time um, to actually get affiliate. But I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Flo. That is awesome. So, to celebrate that, let us... Yeah, I am growing up... No, never, 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 never. You know me well enough to know that I will never grow up. So... Now I'm going to make, well, I am going to make some noise because I need to shake up the purple and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's going to go straight to my, well, that, the fame is actually going to make my beard twice as long Rex. You know that. So. So, now I'm going to try the fun part. Oh, got a lot of purple out there on my palette. So now we're going to try the fun part of... Okay, uh, CV, how do you think uh, Perdita would react if you woke up one morning and realized that I had given her purple hair? I have a feeling that you would be quite displeased and having a quite displeased gunfighter on your hand very capable gunfighter I might add is probably not where you want to be at see here this is what I was talking about you know just giving it looks it looks worse than it really is um, there's some purple in it uh, and some of the highlights let's do a little bit more on that one here hopefully it will not be as bad um, when it actually 
just um did get a little bit much on that one there that's okay i need to switch to a smaller brush for the last bits <clears throat> what brushes do i have that i can mess up completely how about how about no mm. yeah that will do this one's actually a little bit too small what I'm trying to do here, but still might work. Still way too much paint here. So the idea of course here is that we gently, or maybe not so gently, drag the brush over uh, the hair. So yeah, that is a right proper set of purple highlights in her hair. Need a little bit more over on, on near the face. then the idea is to actually use the black contrast paint to finish it off. And the black paint is hopefully going to tone down the purple a lot. It's also going to go into the recesses, making them um, really, uh, really dark. So, thanks Flo. I'm just... Basically, it's not so much about being talented. It's more about being uh, willing to try out new techniques and not caring too much. Uh, I actually kind of pushed off um, painting this crew for about a year because I wanted to you know, work on techniques and you know get them just right when I, I would paint them. So I wanted to test on a lot of other models, but then realized that with the sort of very limited amount of, of painting I do, uh, I would never ever get to that point anyway, so why not actually paint the miniatures I want to play with? Um, instead of waiting around until they could be perfect. Now, I can actually say that it, it is beginning to look really good. I don't know how much of this will come through on camera, but so far, it does look like I'm a genius, but don't worry, I'm not, even if it looks like it. Yeah, that was, I think that was basically it. And now say what you will about the contrast colors, but they sure are nice and easy to work with. They, you've got to give them that. Uh, even if they are just basically uh, sort of regular paints that's very heavy on the pigment. Now it's still not dried. Um, I don't know how much you can actually see I will try to get some good photos on it. No, you can't. Can I get a little bit more light in here? Mm, now it's not really coming through properly. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, the, the only reason I'm doing it this way is because I've noticed that when I'm doing the, um, the black contrast paint over senatal highlights, for instance, and Anything that has, you know, the, the gradient building up, uh, or just even just in plain white, uh, the the raised parts will actually have a lot of the base color shining through uh, and being dampened. And I didn't want to end up in a situation where she was actually. Um, I just need to, to look at this. 
I may need to give it a little bit of gray highlight at some point. Um, but it does have... Cannot show, it does not come through properly on camera. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but it does have a really nice, very subtle... Um, what's called uh, purple shade to it. But yeah. Once it's dried out, I could probably give it a bit of highlight just real quick yeah definitely but should it um should it go for purple highlights uh, for the dry brushing or should it give it a little bit of gray first and then toning it a bit with the with the, the uh, purple i cannot figure it out but anyway on to other things like her face yeah, purple, just a very discreet, but I'm not, I'm not sure dry brushing is, is good because the way the model uh, and the details and lines run is really difficult to get in there with a dry brush and doing it properly. Uh, that's why it got so heavy the other way around or the, the first time around. So I'm leaning a little bit more towards actually you know, painting them in like normal highlights instead of dry brushing. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's let's put some more color on her face. Oh, I actually have now that I think about it, I do have this one, which might might be nice. Um, how's that look? out on paper that's actually a really really nice shade very dark purple but anyway that will be on another model um just think thinking about other things i might be able to do but no let us Let us get some shade on her skin. See this? Yeah. yeah. Now, as I said, you know, the, the way the her hat is is placed in the model and and all that, I'm not gonna do any actual detail work on her face, I think. Um, people really pick her up and look at her, they're gonna see all the other mistakes anyway. No point in making it worse. Um, as you all know by now, I'm of the opinion that it is, for me at least, far better to never draw in their eyes than trying to draw it in and making making it look, look bad. So, that'll basically be enough. Oh, the hybrid purple. Yeah, I've not, I don't think I've ever actually tried using that, but yeah, Gene Steeler base coat. Mm. So... So that is that is nice. Okay, I came to the conclusion that I don't like the color of the belt, but I also don't want to do anything whatsoever about it because that's just going to be work, work, work. That doesn't really give us much in the end. I, uh, I really just want this to be. I don't want it to be over with in in the sense that it's it's a boring task to do. Um, I want it to be over with in the sense that I want the models to be painted. And yeah, to that end, I don't want to go into this whole kind of oh, but it's not the exactly the shade of brown I want to do. That's one of the things I'm trying to teach myself to get over those things and those discussions in my head and just move on. Um, learn from it, of course, but do the fixes on another model. Because then I will have even more models painted. More models painted is more gooder. And yeah, I actually reconsidered my idea of giving her... No, actually... Ah, whatever. Fuck it, I'm just going to give her a black glove. I have thought about doing it, you know, the same... 
uh, brown as the coat and the hat. I think that's just going to be way too much of the same color. So instead, we're going to make it easy on ourselves. Just paint all of this black and then do some edge highlighting on the glove to make it stand out. Maybe a little dry brushing and then dry brushing silver onto the gun itself. And then that will have to do. Also need a little bit of shade on her hands, obviously. Or maybe it's not obvious. I don't know. So there we go. Now, I don't mind that her skin is actually ending up with a very, very bronzed look. Uh, and if you imagine her being the type of person running around outdoors in a place like Texas, Arizona, uh, Nevada, th those kind of, you know, the southwest part of the United States down toward Mexico, I'm guessing you're going to pick up quite a lot of tan as you go along. Also, why did one of my brushes decide to lose a hair? Right there. Oh, well. Can't be helped. Uh, yeah, just the, the last bit of skin. Over there. Over there. And... And yeah, so just moving on, just getting things finished. And just, I prefer to have, you know, two painted sets of uh, miniatures, two, two painted crews, rather than one crew that is really, really well painted. That's, that's my pre preference. So do whatever you feel like when you're painting, and I will do the same. Just doing what I like to do. So, that being done, let us go see if we can fix up the red, because the reds in these models, I actually do put in some effort, also a little bit of noise, uh, some effort into um, highlighting properly because it's going to help a lot when they're on the table. So doing that makes a lot of sense. And I also need to thin that one down a bit already. I'm just talking to myself like I always do. Right, Siri. Um, if you remove Perdita from the table in turn one, then I have obviously made some kind of mistake where I'm no longer um, worthy of playing with her. Though I am curious, I would like to I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated by the concept of taking out a master in turn one. I know it can be done, of course it can. I mean, not only by, by me rushing her forward, but I'm sure you have a ton of tricks up your sleeve you can use to, to make it happen, or at least make it more realistic, more probable. Um, I'd be curious to see them. Yeah, I mean, she is, she is kind of hard to take down, isn't she? Anywho, highlights on the red stuff. Let us start by the gun holsters because they're a little bit more 
Yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's also because Perdita is actually sort of aimed at combat. Um, she, she is a combat monster, effectively. She can hold her own. Um, in in so many ways like even to the point where she uh, when she starts actually just attacking she does have some some decent melee damage um, for those not in the know uh, in, in Malifaux you have either melee attacks or ranged attacks but because Perdita is I think it's called a gunfighter one of her abilities she is allowed to use her guns in close combat. So she doesn't you know, pull out a knife and try to stab you with it or anything, she just keeps shooting at you. And when she's shooting, she's, um, she's yeah, she's a bit of a beast, as I said. I think that's the, the best way to say it. There we go. I'll come back and revisit this all again with a brighter red. I'll just put some white into it in a little bit. Um, for some reason, my brush here is really, really annoying me today. And I've also now hit the camera like four or five times already, I think. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's the if she is engaged with you, well, if you are engaged with her, I guess the the right way of saying it is. So if you have a, a long spear with a long engagement range, she counts as being engaged with you. So therefore, she cannot shoot. But the range of her guns in melee uh, is shorter than the spear, and I I that's that's one thing where the theme kind of breaks for me. Uh, she can shoot a range, she can shoot a range, she can shoot right up when she's right up in your face. But if you're a little bit away from her and wielding, for instance, a spear, as Siri said, um, then you're not allowed to shoot with your guns. Because she's engaged by the spear, so she cannot shoot her ranged weapons. And the ranged weapons, in, as close combat weapons, have shorter range than the spear. And they kind of sort of start to break down just a little bit. But yeah. But I mean, such like all games have these effects here and there where you just go, wait, what? So yeah. Okay. My brush is starting to behave again. Or maybe the paint. I added a little bit of water to the paint. That also often also helps with especially applying sort of the fine detail highlights like this. I can notice here, if you can see it, um, that I don't actually paint the entire surface area. I only uh, apply the paint to some of it, the mainly the raised parts, or the upward facing parts where the light is supposed to hit. Again, it's cheating, uh, but it is cheating in a way that makes the miniature look good, and then you're allowed to do it. that one up. That's annoying. There. Again, I mean, this part in here, I'm only going to give this one layer of highlighting. Um, this is not going to be very visible. And this is actually a very dark part of the model anyway. So I think it makes sense to just keep it simple.
and come to the front. Yeah, that's going to be that's a bit messed up here, but anyway, we'll fix that in. What is it the same movie terms? We'll fix that in production or post production or whatever. This part here is in many ways rather tedious job of just gently painting in all the lines one at a time. With Currently, what seems like no brush control whatsoever on my part. But I mean, after it's done, it just looks so much better because it really it, it brings out the shadows and the highlights, which is not surprising because we're doing highlights. Uh, but just uh, just get, it gives that little extra bit to the miniature, um, except when you mess it up like I seem to have done. Yes, let's just, let's not worry too much about that and just move on to better things. So let's add a little bit of white into the mix. And now I know that this is really getting dangerously close to making her coat pink, which is why the highlights are going to be made very sparingly with the brighter, brighter red color. And I'm also not making it overly bright. Um, I'll show you in a little bit what we're talking about here, color-wise, once I'm done mixing it up. Just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. So this here is the red color I used for uh, the first round, also the base color. And out here, which is very yellowish, uh, but just it gives you an idea of how little I actually uh, tone it down. Oh yeah, cool. Siri, thanks for stopping by and bon appetit enjoy your dinner so yeah so just a little bit of light uh, of white into this and you should be able to see it once it actually goes on the miniature hopefully not too pink uh, let's do this here wait until it's dried out a little bit and then we can better see the effect also doing a little bit of actual edge highlighting uh, down here. So kind of a, again a cheating cheap technique that makes things look good. Now the idea with the highlights here is to emulate the light actually shining on it from on above which is why i paint the top part of whatever pouches pouches or whatever she's uh, she's got here on her hips just giving them a little bit and i can actually see that i have made this too bright so i'll need to drag out a little bit more of the red um, that's one of the reasons i actually mix it sort of mix it in with the the red color itself so I can easily just drag out just a little bit of the original color um, and adjust the the tone so on to the next poster
see here this this strap going up I'm actually giving that mostly just the the highlighted color um, because I think it, it it makes sense it's kind of white um, white with a D not a T so it, it, it kind of makes sense and again do the edge highlighting down there but here also do a little bit of, of extra paint up here and just bring it down there So there we go. Now to do the same discreetly for shirt. So we're giving her purple hair and a pink shirt. She's really gonna love us for that. a little bit too no no yeah i'm just uh focusing here guys See if I can actually hit the lines better this time around. Because the, the part here where I'm actually using a brighter color, that's where it gets really important to not paint into the recesses, but just paint ever so gently, really just stretching out the, the paint. Uh, and again, it's not come through on camera, I'm sure, but looking at it here, I can I can really see how it starts to bring out bring out the depth in the miniature. And that is what we are going for. Keep the the recesses dark and the highlights gradually building up to a sort of richer and brighter color ever so slightly and of course you're gonna mess it up and this details on her shirt here are phenomenal which is also what makes it a little daunting to paint these miniatures but I think I think we're there so that, yeah you should be able to at least see that there's some color variation it, it looks good. It looks good. This actually means that with the exception of the for the hair, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with the hair. And now that it's actually dried and I can see the lines a lot better, um, I might think, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Warren. Uh, I think she does. Um, shit, I have not painted her boots at all. So, Padita, you get black boots. My friend. Quick, easy, boring decision. Besides, it's not like it's going to matter much because the boots are actually such a small part of the miniature um, that they will mainly serve just as shadows against the grass we'll put on the base in a little bit. Light pink or purple. Uh, I'm going to go for the purple um, with, with the hair again. 
Um, because pink is... I think it's going to be too much at this point. But it's a dab of purple. Unfortunately, I don't have a dark purple, but I could mix... Oh, I'm going to mix the purple in with some, uh, some blue. Some dark blue and, and use that for the highlight. I think that's actually what we talked about last time. Now that now that I sort of think about it, um, I think we talked about actually doing sort of a bluish purple and yes, very, very light dry brush uh, with almost no paint left on the brush. We will do that straight after painting her, her boots. What are the, 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 the jangly things on the back called what called spurs? Uh, yeah, the the absolutely horrible spiked wheels you use to hit your horse with so it goes faster. Yeah no uh Rohan, I'm actually thinking uh, a mix of purple and blue. Uh for the first run I'm gonna keep it with a dark blue as so as to not make it too bright. Um, then it can always build up from, from there. So anyway. That's the boots painted black. Horse motivators. Yeah, but it's a, such a cruel way of doing it really. But anyway. Are we going for the hair? We are going for the hair. Um. Okay, my purple paint is really spazzing out on my wet palette. I think I just got a huge lump because I've never really used purple. I think a lot of it was just sort of gathered at the top and even after shaking it up, uh, it just came out as a, in a big drop. Blob. Um, so yeah, a bit annoying. Um, I need to find. I need to get some more cheap, small brushes, um, so I can actually use them as dry brushes. Might use this one though. Um, this is one of Army Painters Hobby Series. It is meant for highlighting. It is. Let's go. There we go. Um, yeah, always leave your, your, your brushes. Uh, so it's not as thin as my fine detail brush. It's actually closer to, but not quite as thick as my size zero. Um, size zero is, is the black one on the left. So yeah, that, that might work. Um, maybe I should cut off the, the tip of this to, to get a more... Maybe just cut off the tip because it's bent. Um, we get sort of a more blunt uh, finish, as you can see. You just cut off the tip. So instead of going into um, a thin uh, yeah, tip, I guess the word is, is now more sort of uh, sawn off square. Which I think is good for you know, dry brushing, so you can actually hit stuff and you don't have the tip going into the, the recesses. I don't know, let's try it out. And let's also get some... What do we believe in? We have these two. We have the dark blue and the night blue. And the dark blue actually seems to have a little bit of red in it already as the lightener. Let's go for let's go for that. And let's see what we can. Man, this is really thin. They have not been been probably properly um, shook. Yeah. I think what happens is that when the the, the um, paint separates, kind of sort of leaves a little bit up in in the the top here uh, probably some of the medium because when it came out let's just illustrate when it came out here 
you can see the middle part, the very dark one, is actually the, the color that came out first, which was very, very um, thin. And then the, the next bit came out. Let's see if I take some more. Then it looks a little bit more like the actual something that's actually blue and not really dark. So that is the one thing that really bugs me about the paint uh, in the dropper bottles as opposed to Citadel's bottles is that you will get some something caught up in, in the top of the pot, a bottle. Um, and that can lead to a bit of you know, paint being lost because it's it comes out like this and you have to put out some get out some more paint from the same bottle and I don't know. That doesn't seem to be the same problem with the Citadel pots. Yeah, and a lot less will dry out. I mean, the Citadel pots have so many other issues, like yeah, they're terrible to get. It's terrible to get the pot, the paint from um, something like uh, like this pot here to get that into an airbrush, for instance. And you can see here, I haven't used this white in quite a while, and it looks absolutely horrible. And if you look down the, in, in there, you can see the medium washing around at the top. I mean, this it might be salvageable, but let's, uh, let's get rid of that one for now. And let's go back to Padita, because she's the one that's going to be fun to work with. So we have the blue and the purple. And it is quite light, actually. Let's see what happens when we mix this up. Uh, I'm adding a little bit of black into it as well. That kind of just made it grimy. So now I'm mixing up a color that I will have virtually no chance at all at replicating, but who cares? Uh, half my paint is the old Citadel pots. Oh yeah, the, the ring around the lid. I mean, those were the ones where I remember not even being able to open up the lid at, uh, at the end because there was so much paint in it. Uh, and even when you could, there was no guarantee you would actually be able to shut it again, close it again. So yeah, so. So, this is what we're going with. I mean, it does have a lot of the, the sort of reddish purple left, but also some blue to it. So what can we get out of this? Can we actually make this work? I believe we can. Again, I'm going for a subtle effect, so it's not going to show up on the camera. But it does seem to work. Now, I am still considering that it might be an idea to give a very light gray dry brush as well, simply to get the brightness out. But again, I mean, the way the, the miniature is modeled, the lines actually catch the, the light quite a bit. So you do have the recesses um, coming up. 
I mean, at the moment, it doesn't really look like her hair is actually sort of purplish colored. It looks like she's gotten lines made at, you know, uh, at a hairdresser. Okay. Who's to say that that's not what happened? I mean, if all else fails, just modify history after the, the facts to make it fit your narrative. Isn't that what people always do you know, when writing history books? But it is also 8.30, we're coming up on the last bits of the stream. I would like to keep going until 9, that's my, my schedule anyway. Um, so we will do that, but we will also start sort of slowly just winding down. I mean, this is actually not half bad really so what i might be able to do to pull this off is just do yeah i mean this is really really subtle you can't see it well um But even so, I mean, if you just add a really, really light, you know, almost white purple highlight on top of all of this to really bring out the, the tips of the hair. That might, might just work. So let us do that. Get a little bit of white, a little bit of sort of the same tone of purple. Get a lot more white into there. Get even more white into that. I mean, what we're aiming at here, we're, we're down to this color here, um, which really, really is just a, sort of a broken white. That's a little bit more. It's actually sort of a buxia or whatever. People always discuss what is the real term or real correct words for this. I hope this doesn't overdo it. Okay. Yeah, just, just a bit. Really just a smidge. Not through all of it. Only the, the raised parts of the hair does have the advantage i would say that it breaks off a little bit of the the darker purple makes it look more white but she's definitely getting getting crazy hair out of this just uh, it's a little tricky actually getting in here but I think it works for some parts down here. I want to hit as well. Yeah, it's actually looking quite quite nice. So this actually shows up on camera now. This is where I really, really have to be careful and not overdo it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and this, this really only goes into the highest places. Um, and I've been very careful about what parts I hit what parts I don't 
And I think I need to stop now, because otherwise it's going to go on so much that it destroys the effect. Yeah. So this basically works. Thank you for um, thank you for for suggesting you know an extra bit of bit of dry brush highlight with with the purple, um, especially the the final bit of the bright one here. Really, I mean, when I'm looking at her, there's no doubt that the the main color is extremely dark. Um, that is it's all, all black down the recesses, but at the same time, I can actually see at a distance here. Um, I can see sort of the purple effect, which gives a really, really nice contrast to the uh, the brown of the coat. So much better than it, if it had just been black with a little bit of, of white highlighting. So I think we're down to just the glove and the gun and the base. So we might be able to pull that off in 20 minutes. If I don't talk as much and get painting instead. Uh, the, for the gun... Just doing a heavy, heavy dry brush of again the the gun metal. Yeah, then it it it, it does it make sense if I say that it, it pops in that it's visible, but it doesn't sort of pop as if it was a fluorescent purple. It's really coming along quite nicely. I see that's the thing where I kind of go. Um, I don't, I don't care about a lot of the other details uh, on this model not being what I had hoped I could do. But making the hair look so pretty and nice, that makes me happy. Um, and also, it means that I actually tried out a new, new uh, technique. Realized that it didn't work entirely on its own and just adjusted it to make it work as it should. And that is a large part of what I think miniature painting is all about. You know, being being willing to uh, try out new techniques, try something different. You know, um, push your own boundaries a, a little bit. Um, it's always fun. So yeah. And now since I do have the the blue color out. I'm actually gonna just um, highlight the glove with a. I'm just gonna pull in some some black as well, so I can actually not, kind of sort of use the same technique, I guess, as I did with the hair, just in the glove. Um, dry brushing it. It's probably gonna need more blue to actually show up. Uh, try to be be visible. Over the over the black. Also, yeah, coming to work with fingers looking like this will give you um, fun comments from your coworkers. Again, it's uh, it doesn't show up on camera, but it does actually give a really, really nice finish to the glove here, um, because it breaks the black. And, and that's the thing I've learned when when doing miniatures like this, just painting full on black, uh, especially if it's a little glossy like like this one here, that usually doesn't in itself give a, a very good result. You really want to, to break it with some highlights of some kind. Um, that's what I'm going to do here. This just adds that little bit of color that will trick your eyes into believing what you're showing them. And since basically anything other than black is brighter than black, all of this will function as highlights. Um, but adding the color means that you're not doing a gray highlight. Um, so it doesn't turn into kind of white. It just adds that extra little bit of really nice. I will need more black. And it doesn't have to be much uh, for it to be visible, really. Uh, I, can, I can see the blue tint 
on her glove here, um, which is exactly what I'm aiming for. Uh, may do just a smidgen of extra highlight right at the very top of the glove. But this here kind of just puts enough contrast on. It's fun to work with. And now I can just do really quickly just a single. If I can dig out some non purple white, it would be even better. I just have a little bit of, of actual gray on highlighting here on the ridge. And just on the other side, just quickly run it over a few times on the fingers. To make them stand out just a little bit. You're sort of at the top of the hand here. You really don't want this part here that I'm painting on the top of the hand, you really don't want that to be black when the other parts have been, been highlighted. Yeah, so there we go. That looks... That looks good. So, the hat, the hair, well, the face and skin as much as, as needs to be done. I have a very tiny correction I need to do because I accidentally got some red onto some of her skin. And that actually shows... Does it? It actually doesn't show. Um, only shows when I'm looking at it up close. So I don't want to risk messing up the, the, the shading. You see it's on the left part of her chest. Um, some of the red actually didn't go on her shirt, but actually went on her skin. So. But yeah, so that's done. The shirt is done. The belt. Oh yeah, the belt. I need to do something about that. Uh, not too happy with it, as I said. But let's just give it a quick edge highlight and see if we can make something fun out of that. And for this, we're going to thin down or lighten up, brighten up the, um, the brown with some yellow. Because that is a nice tone to use for... You know, making brown highlights instead of just going brown to white, go brown to yellow. We'll add a little bit. Uh, just trying to hit a hit a, a shade that I like, which was there, and a little bit of water as well to make it. Blow a little better. And there we go. Let's see what we have. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's happening to my voice. Uh, maybe it's winter, maybe it's just me talking. Um, I don't really talk that much to people other than when maybe playing computer games or doing these streams. So it may just be my, my voice that's finally beginning to to tell me that I'm not used to speaking, out loud at least. Um, yeah, let's see if we can just quickly do a discreet little edge highlight up here. Well, that wasn't that discreet, really. But... It will have to do. I mean, it breaks the color just enough to make it look not flat. Um, yeah. That's again kind of the idea here is to add some brighter paint to the top part to make it look like uh, the light shining down from above hits it. And 
you can actually get away with using a color that's quite a lot brighter than the base color even if you're just giving it a single uh, layer because again if you pull it out at you know 50 centimeters to a meter uh, you're not going to be able to actually see the switch but your eye will tell you that there is a difference it does give it a bit of a cartoonish look sometimes but hey, it is a crazy world, uh, the world of Malifaux, so why not add cartoons? There, and... And also, what I can see here is that as it dries up, it actually kind of uh, fades enough that it's it becomes even less visible than it is when I'm applying it. I'll just do a quick another round here. Also taking in some of the parts that I actually raised a little bit. Now I'm not going into the recess here, the where I'm painting, because I actually like having that as a separator down into the red parts. Uh, a little bit like if you have uh, what's called cell shading in computer games. Uh, again, the ca cartoony style you have. Um, all the different parts of the model or uh, carrots or whatever if, if it's in the cartoon world um, and they are um, sort of emphasized by an, uh, by an outline a dark usually just black outline that makes them pop so you don't have uh, green next to red or whatever but you have green and then a black line and then you have the red that's a, another good way of cheating and making each color more visible. Um, and I just need to gently add the highlight in here as well. And here. So, I think that actually cleaned it up quite a bit. Um, technically speaking, instead of being shaded, it's actually uh, two colored but it gives the 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 impression of being a lot brighter now than it was um, and you can see especially here you can see a little bit more clearly that it's very bright on top but if I'm moving her around a little bit you can actually see the details so that is more or less it um so there's a gun sticking out of the holster could do with a little bit of metallic on at least parts of it let's not do the handle itself let's just leave that at black um just to give the basically just give it different color than all the brown that's already in the model um i think that's there's more than enough brown going on here. Uh, too much of that will will just make it flow, or not not really flow, but sort of fall into just a blurry. I don't know. I I don't think it's going to be looking good. So I'm just going to leave the hand black, really sticking out. And here I am actually going for the full black uh, coloring without any highlights to speak of, because I actually want it to stand out. Because it's such a small part of the model, um, the black itself, down here on her right hip, is basically just going to go in contrast, especially with the uh, light brown belt, and just really stick out. I have some, some shiny metal on the rest of the gun, and then going down to the red. Here I think the, the, the uh, handle, um, or whatever it's called, of the gun, does a lot better. So... All we need now for her to be finished is to do the uh, the base and I will not be doing that on stream uh, I will be going for roughly the same effect as we have on these two guys so again same kind of uh, rocks Francisco here he's got a little bit on the back and I'm just gonna do the the grass I know probably going for 
something like you know red dust like you have in the, the southwest part and of US uh, and down towards Mexico would be better. But on the other hand, uh, we usually play on a, on a green uh, play mat anyway, so I think the grass is going to look better. And again, the, the, the miniatures have a lot of khaki colored and brown colors in them. Um, and while that makes sense because they are trying to use it as a bit of a camouflage, uh, I think it also makes sense from an aesthetic point of view to say, well, this miniature is going to be standing on a table. I want him to look good. Um, if I made a brown base, then if you can imagine him being brown, brown, sort of greenish brown, and then brown base, again, it's all just going to flow into one brown blob, which is not looking good. Um, I have something over here that might show a little bit of that effect, where I think it still works. I mean, this is one of the other guys in the same crew where I decided to go for the brown uh, crackly cracked up uh, dirt. Again, I do have the very bright rocks on them to give some contrast. But the reason I think it actually works for this guy, um, as opposed to these ones here, is that Papa Loco is in a straight jacket, which is, it was white, white to begin with, but after a few years in a mental institution, it got a little bit dirty and then he broke out. So it's a little bit more sort of an off-white, creamy white color, but it's still a bright white, uh, bright, very bright brown, if you will. Whereas Francisco's coat, I mean, it, it doesn't get to be called brown if it gets much darker than this. Then we're venturing down into black territory. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if I had made the brown, same kind of brown cracked uh, base on Francisco here instead of the grass, it would have been more brown on an already very brown miniature. Whereas in Papaloco, it kind of works because he's not got that much dark brown in his um, uh, in, in the miniature, in the paint job. Uh, it's actually uh, sort of, I tried getting it, um, getting the, the, the straight jacket to be sort of the defining part of the model, the, the part you, you see, the, see first uh, that brings, pulls in your eye. And again, remember, this is a miniature game, so they'll probably be, be, be looking at him from this angle all the time. Anyway, uh, you're not going to be looking at him like this, because then, that means you're kind of sort of putting your face down on the table. Uh, instead, it's just going to be no, seen, seen at an, an angle. So. so there is that. But we got a little bit of work done on Abuela's wheelchair. And we've got some, some more work done on Petita, and I'm especially pleased with the way the hair turned out. So, I think that's going to have to do it for um, today. Let's see if I can find any one to raid. If you want to stick around. Uh, I don't even know if I have any friends that are online. Oh, we have Pixel Sword playing Dungeon Keeper, we have AJ just chatting, and we have some Danish people playing Keyforge. Uh, thank you, Rohan. I think it's actually it's been a while since I've actually completed any full kind of crew. I mean, I did the Necron team for Kill Team, but that's kind of cheating because they're basically just metal skeletons. That was a little bit too easy to do. Um, but yeah, having a fully painted um uh, team it's just nice i mean i do have all the monster hunters and pistoleros and so on that i can fill out with it, but this is the um Perdita crew i've been playing with um so yeah i think we will let's go say hi to aj um she stopped by here earlier and that was very nice of her so thank you for hanging out with me on another uh, Saturday, uh, Sunday evening of painting. Uh, as always, it's been fun. Thank you for your feedback on all of this. I hope to see you all again soon. Um, but for now, there's not much else to say than, as always, keep painting.